Awesome. Tony Khan and Brian Danielson have an announcement. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brian Danielson is standing next to Tony Schiavone. Khan. Uh, Tony Khan. And, uh, and he has got this fucking thing on his head. It is, it is uh, like 2,000 bandages. They're all wrapped around his head like he's, like literally he's Invisible Man. If you unwrap the bandages, he won't even have a head. He's just like this giant pumpkin-shaped head just covered in bandages. And he's standing there. And Tony starts cutting this promo about how this is going to be, we're all sad, he says. This will be Brian's last year as a pro wrestler. All in. We had an amazing event. Last year, he said. That's not right. Yeah. Last year, we had this great all in. Would have been better if Brian hadn't been out with an injury. But I'm here to tell you that he will be there at All In 2024. And I thought, God damn it. He's cursed. What's going to happen this time? So then he says, we have got a new, exciting something or other. The Continental Classic. Twelve stars in matches every week. They'll be in Raleigh. They'll be in. He's naming all these cities. Quickly. Yeah. And he doesn't explain anything about the Continental Classic. No. Other than there would be a league finals. Wasn't that the Big Lebowski? And then at the end, the winner would be crowned at World's End. Yes. I hope a gun isn't pulled during league play. I'd be sad. So I'm trying to figure out, like, what the fuck is this tournament? And then, you know, Brian starts doing this promo. And, uh, or no, first Tony goes, I'm, I'm pleased to announce the first participant. It'll be you, Brian Danielson. And I said, bullshit. What? <laughs> and in fact, Brian Danielson, who got surgery on a broken orbital bone last week. Okay. One week ago, he got surgery on a broken orbital bone. He is the first competitor in a tournament that starts on Thanksgiving. And it's round robin. Well, we later find out that it's a round robin tournament. And uh, I could not believe my eyes. So are we trying to kill this guy? Like, <laughs> what, what are we doing now? So first he said, because What are we doing? There's 12 stars, he says, and it'll be a round robin. I'm thinking, okay, that's 11 matches each. That'll take 11 weeks to do. And uh, then he explains, like, the finals are on December 27th, which is much less than 11 weeks away. So somebody pointed out it would be two blocks of six, presumably. Presumably. Mm -hmm. He didn't say this. That still means... I think, it's, I think it's five. Or no, six. No, everyone has five matches. Yes. So six. Yes. But that means Dan Bryan will be wrestling at least five times between now and the Tokyo Dome. Yeah. Think about this. Wow. Let me go through the timeline, everybody. When, so so Brian broke his orbital bone on collision three weeks ago, okay? He then did another match with a broken orbital bone on Wednesday because he wasn't sure that uh, he's gonna, he was going to need surgery or whatever. He hadn't, he hadn't got looked at yet, okay? So then that night... I, uh, I don't know if it was that night, but but a week later he got surgery, and the idea was it's touch and go whether he's going to make January 4th. It's touch and go whether he's going to make January 4th. Mm -hmm. They then announced he will begin wrestling in two weeks, mm -hmm. and he will have five matches between Thanksgiving and a match with Okada at the Tokyo Dome. Does anybody want to take bets? No. No. <laughs> I don't want to bet against the man. <laughs> I don't want... Uh, <laughs> I love watching him wrestle. I'm very scared. <laughs> He's had a rough year in terms of safety. And I'm screaming to myself, why is he doing this tournament? And then he looks at me through the camera and says, I've wanted to do this kind of tournament my entire career. Nothing will stop me. All right, well, there you go. That's that. Yeah, so you know what's going to happen? Him. He's not going to go in at half acid. No. He's going to go in and no. he's going to give no. it his all. No, because, Brian, he told me it will be the best wrestling tournament ever. Yeah. Is there a possibility we get some kind of mask that uh, Daniel Bryan wears? He better. I certainly hope I'm so. hoping. Undertaker had that one for a while. He better wear, like, sure. those helmets at Knight's War. <laughs> wow. Or NASCAR drivers. Uh, and I'm not talking just the helmet. I'm talking the whole suit. Yeah. Oh, the chain mail and everything. Huh? Lenny Poffman uh, won a battle royal once. I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but I was watching Tony Khan in this uh, this uh, promo here. 
The man did not blink one time. Um, you mentioned earlier, Brian, that you cannot believe that was the best take they have for Chris Tatlander. <laughs> this is the best take they have for Tony Khan? <laughs> yes. Danielson was great. Tony was coherent. I will he say that. <laughs> All right. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale. Okay. We finally, finally have some clarity in this thing. I've been saying for weeks now, the only two women in the company who are over are Willow Nightingale and Tony Storm. Let's get these belts on them and make people care again. Here she is. She's got a qualifier against Julia Hart, who already had her title match. All she's got to do is win here and get another pay-per-view. And they're doing this match. It does not feel like a championship match. Tony is talking about how who is whose best friend is really more important than the title or whatever he said. And the match is kind of sloppy and random. Like Willow misses a cannonball into the stairs and like 20 seconds later is doing a full Nelson slam for a near fall. And then let's talk about this finish. And then there's a finish. So Willow goes for a powerbomb. And I think that Julia was supposed to slip out and land on her feet. But she like either it, yeah. forgot or couldn't slip out, and Willow power bombed her onto her ass, literally right on her ass. Julia mm -hmm. does not sell it. Willow then throws a lariat, misses, and just collapses. And then Julia hits her from behind, moonsaults her, and pins her. Excuse me. Yeah. She pinned Willow clean. Yes. Willow is not going to the pay-per-view. No. She's not going to the champion. No. Still nobody's going to care. And she had her What chance. in the fuck? She she won the uh, the heart thing. Yeah, thank God. What, and, a, what a boost uh, that was. It. That that was a bone. Oh that she my was thrown God from the in heaven. Yeah. What is happening? I was this was the part where I was like, what is going on? What the hell is happening on the show with this company? What's going on in the world? I think it was Tony during this match. He said uh that um Julia is creepy and scary, and they zoomed in on her face, and I said, no, she is not. She is one of the least creepy human beings <laughs> I've ever seen in professional wrestling. Her and Kyrie, I think, are at the top of the list of least creepy human beings I've ever seen. No. Oh, man. <laughs> Lexi interviews absolutely big. Points out that FTR and LFI and even House of Black, they all want title shots now. And absolutely big say, no, they won't get them. And Lexi then tells them, you're defending us all of them in a four-way at full gear. They're like, this is ridiculous. This is news to us. They're exactly right. This is how they found out what the title match is and that it's three teams. They did cut a great promo about how they're the two baddest dudes in the company. And they have come together to be the greatest tag team ever. So there you go. A random four-way tag. You know, I made a comment about this show and about uh, this week's SmackDown, and I've, I've noticed that the people that go, get most angry at me are the ones who don't actually watch WWE, but I had mentioned what a great job WWE does with the women as compared to AEW, and I had these people talking about, L listen to Brian trying to start all this tribalism, blah, blah, blah. It ain't fucking tribalism, bro. Watch the last 15 minutes of SmackDown, and then watch this show. And get back to me with this bullshit tribalism thing. It's like not even in the same universe. You watch that shit that they did at the end of SmackDown, and like that angle they did with the women, it was like for about uh, 15 minutes there, especially like the last 10 minutes. I mean, it felt like the women's division and damage control were like the hottest act in all of WWE. And here we are. Julia beats Willow. She's out of the tournament. That's your women's match. Moving on. <laughs> yep. We had some neighbors. They had a little horse. One day the horse disappeared and we didn't know if they sold it or ate it. <laughs> I think it was ate it. I used to go over there and spend the night with the girls. I was quite a bit Did you ever eat dinner though. there? No. The girls, the twins, they met, they'd met this father and son. Oh, and no. one of them married the father and the other married the son. Can you imagine how different ways they are related? The, the I, daughters, I actually can't. That was a weird bunch. The dad was a uh, stepdad to the girls, and they got, got kind of familiar once in a while. <laughs> what? Move on. Go. <laughs> Don't. Just go. He's was having a cow, too. Not inbred? <laughs> anyway, we used to have to churn butter. Are you having fun with me? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.